A major area of science on the International Space Station is studying how the space environment impacts the human body so we can better prepare for longer, future deep space missions. The launch of Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko less than three weeks from now on the first year-long mission to this station expands that research by studying crew members in space for a longer period of time. But it does something else, too, taking advantage of the fact that Kelly has an identical twin, former astronaut Mark Kelly. And joining me this morning to discuss the twins study is Dr. Craig Kundrat. He is the deputy chief scientist of NASA's Human Research Program. Craig, tell me how this idea to study twins came about. Well, thanks very much for having me this morning. Um, it began in November of 2012 when Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko were named to the one-year mission. When Scott Kelly was meeting with scientists at NASA to discuss the science that would be done on the one-year mission, he asked the question if any of it would have to do with his twin brother Mark, retired astronaut. Our initial rea reaction was no. Uh, we had just heard about this announcement and there were no twin studies in the queue. Mm -hmm. And normally, if we were to select a new set of experiments, we would have probably wanted to start about a year earlier than that. The second thought was, no, it's just two individuals and one twin pair. <clears throat> and that's not our, you know, we usually want more subjects for statistical significance. But then the third thought was, hold it. This is a chance in a lifetime. We haven't really had this opportunity before, and we don't see foresee that happening again anytime soon. So let's seize the opportunity and make the best use of it and see what kind of experiments we can do uh, on these two twins. So uh, how, how did you select the experiments? So we put out a research announcement to the scientific community in the U.S. and solicited ideas. We had specific categories in mind and we got about 40 proposals in response and we selected 10 to span the gamut of things that we were interested in. Give me a sense then of what you're, you're looking at. I, I understand it's broken down into about four categories. Right, there are four broad categories. Um, so first we have the psychological aspect uh, of space flight because we're very interested in understanding both how the human body and human mind respond to space flight. So the first part is a study called cognition that will look at uh, Scott and Mark uh, during the, the, not just the one-year mission, but like all the other experiments, pre-flight and post-flight as well. The second area is physiology. Uh, we're looking at, for example, how the fluids shift in the body in weightlessness. Uh, that could be a major contributor to the vision problems that we're seeing arise in some astronauts. Uh, a third area is looking at the microbiome. These are the bacteria that live in our gut. And we are outnumbered 10 to 1 on a cell count basis by bacteria in our gut. And so we're looking at how that changes in Scott, who's got a special diet for a year in a relatively clean environment, and how that compares to Mark. The fourth area is really brand new for NASA. It's built on the, the shoulders of the Human Genome Project and the work that has resulted from that. And that's the molecular level, where we're looking at how genes are being turned on and off, uh, how that's resulting in changes in RNA in the cells and changes in proteins and, and metabolites, uh, all resulting from the changes in the genes. Now, all of those you could do on Scott in space. What, what's the advantage of comparing it to whatever you find in Mark on Earth? Well, the great thing is, you know, the classic question is, you know, how much of our, our health and behavior, et cetera, is determined by our genes and how much by our environment, the nature versus nurture right. uh, discussion. So in this case, we've got two genetically identical individuals, and we can monitor what kind of changes occur in Mark in an ordinary lifestyle and compare those to the changes that we see in Scott in flight with essentially the same gene set. Mm -hmm. And so when we see significant differences in Scott that we don't see in Mark, then we're on to, we have a good clue that there may be something to follow up on. In the, in the environment is, to, is responsible for right. the change. Yeah, it could be the weightlessness, it could be radiation, it could be the isolated, confined nature. Uh, there are several aspects of space flight which pose a challenge. How are you gonna gather data uh, from the two subjects? Well, on the molecular front, uh, we're collecting samples from saliva, cheek, uh, urine, feces, and blood. On the, on the other uh, side, the physiology, uh, we're using some instrumentation which we can only use on the ground, like MRIs, but we're also using instrumentation that we can use on the ground and in flight, like ultrasound. And then the cognition test that I mentioned earlier, that's entirely on a laptop, so that, that works in both places. Oh, it's, it's 
fairly straightforward and not not too complicated to uh, to get the data to study. It's another That's question. That's easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was a key part of putting the twin study together is. Uh, we didn't design any new equipment or anything for the study. We capitalized on investigations already ongoing, and then for this new molecular realm, obtaining cheek and saliva and feces and blood is relatively easy. The, the experiments themselves are, are related in that the experimenters are working cooperatively as right. well. That's right. This is an unusual arrangement. We selected 10 separate investigators, and all working together, we forged this into one large meta-study, if you will. So all 10 investigators are sharing data with one another, um, sharing in the analysis, they'll write papers together. And one of the investigators did a similar type of study uh, with one subject, uh, just doing the molecular part, following that subject for 14 months. So we have a good template on which to build. Mm -hmm. But this is very unusual. I'm not aware of another study like this, even on, on the ground, where you've got so much molecular work as well as the physiology, the psychology, and the microbiome. With one pair of subjects here, I, I think that's not a statistically significant sample, right? But this is still worth doing. Absolutely. Yeah, the normal twin study would involve tens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of twins. Well, we don't have that many in the astronaut corps. We just have these two. Just the one set. And so what we're expecting is that with the genetic identity underlying them, that we're in a good position to see some subtle changes that we wouldn't be able to see in two individuals who weren't identical twins. Now, those will be clues. It's very unlikely we'll have a definitive result uh, from this study. But we'll have clues that we can follow up then with normal research studies that would involve the normal number of astronauts. So this is really a, a discovery opportunity, not likely to generate final conclusions. And like most things with data gathering pre and post flight, so it's, you've got a year's worth of uh, data gathering in front of you. That's more. right, that's right. So we've, we've already uh, done several sessions of pre-flight data collection, and uh, now we're entering the flight phase. Then after flight, there will be kind of an intense uh, six months worth of uh, data collection, and then most of the twin study uh, data and sample collections will stop six months after uh, the mission. A few go on because they were part of studies already in the uh, portfolio, mm -hmm. and they'll go on a bit longer. Uh, but the twin study for the whole will will wrap up in the fall of 2016 in terms of data and sample collection. Be interesting to see what you learn. Thanks very much for uh, for telling us about it. Thanks for having me. Craig Kundrat is the uh, deputy chief scientist for NASA's Human Research Project.